Auteur. It's a label reserved for a tier of director whose individual style, whose artistic touch, is so significant that his works are unmistakably his. And with these auteurs, there's often an accompanying tale that reveals their passion for their creations. Quentin Tarantino working at a video store and becoming a human archive of film history. The way Kevin Smith maxed out multiple credit cards, risking absolute financial ruin to make clerks. Or how about director Buck Adams? Buck Adams had such a passion for the Super Mario Brothers Super Show that led him to create Super Horneo Brothers. Perhaps the greatest parody porno in all recorded history. But he had to fight to see his creative vision fulfilled as he had truly desired. And for years, this work had become so difficult to find that people began to believe that perhaps it had never existed at all. So for this episode of Tales from the Internet, let's take a look at the search for Super Horneo Brothers. Thank you to Trade for sponsoring this video. With Trade, you can discover new coffees from the nation's best local roasters. Trade uses your taste preferences to match you with your own personal coffee selections shipped straight from the roastery at peak freshness. Step 1. Take the quiz, answer questions about how you like your coffee, and Trade will pick matches just for you. Step 2. Choose how often you want the coffee to be delivered to you. And Step 3. Rate your matches so Trade can continue to make the best picks for your taste. Trade uses compostable packaging to ship all of their coffee in. It's roasted and shipped to you within 24 hours for peak freshness. Of the picks made for me, my favorite is the Black Velvet by Atomic Coffee Roasters. It's a dark coffee with notes of burnt sugar, graham cracker, and malted milk balls. And Trade has a first match guarantee. This means that if you don't love the first coffee they send you, they'll send you a different bag for free. My viewers will get their first bag free when they sign up. Just take the quiz by clicking my link in the description box. Free shipping is also included. Like jazz music, the parody porno is one of the greatest truly American forms of art in the world. There's just so many classics throughout the years. A Tale of Two Titties, Everybody Does Raymond, Playmate of the Apes, Lord of the G-Strings, featuring the trials and tribulations of one Dildo Saggins. I could stand here and list these movies all day long, but eventually we gotta get to the topic at hand. The holy grail of parody pornos. Super Horneo Brothers. Starring my fellow Queens College alumnus Ron Jeremy. There's perhaps no other living human on the planet better suited to playing the role of a pornographic Super Mario. Not just because he looks like that legendary Italian plumber from Brooklyn, but because of his even closer resemblance to Captain Lou Albano who had played Mario on the TV show. This parody porno, Super Horneo Brothers, was so fondly remembered that it would always come up in conversations about these kinds of movies. Yet for some reason, despite so many people remembering it, nobody seemed to actually have a copy of the film, online or otherwise. It got to the point where some people started to think maybe this thing didn't actually exist. It was some Mandela effect thing like Shazam. Perhaps the images of Ron Jeremy floating around dressed like Super Mario were unrelated and they scrambled people's brains somehow. And the Super Mario Brothers movie that came out in 1993 might as well have just been a porn movie without the sex. However, unlike a lot of other Mandela effects, there actually was good evidence that this thing really existed. Not just the promo pictures, but also some images of the box art and some abandoned store listings. But the true nature of Super Horneo Brothers remained shrouded in mystery until July of 2008. That was when a user of the Something Awful forums named Doorknob Johnny made a post searching for the movie. God help me, I am trying to find a copy of either Super Horneo Brothers or Super Horneo Brothers 2. I would prefer the first one, but I'm not picky. The movie came out in 93, was produced by Buck Adams, and stars Ron Jeremy as Horneo. I wish I was kidding, but it exists and I want to own it. I'd be willing to buy it or even trade it for my copy of The Bear Wench Project. Anyone? Nobody happened to have a copy on hand, but there were a few leads that popped up. One user, Snoo Snoo, had found a listing for it on Porn Supermart, but of course, it was sold out. Another store was found called Global Entertainment, located in Oakland, California. It was mentioned at some point that they had it at the store, but unfortunately, the location had closed. Another user, BobX13, contacted Ron Jeremy's manager directly, and Ron Jeremy's manager responded. He had no fucking idea where this movie went. 
Bob would continue to dig, and eventually he would come across a blog post from 2002. In the post, the writer mentions owning a copy of Super Horneo Brothers. Bob emails the guy, and surprisingly, once again, he gets a response. The guy said that he wasn't sure if he still had it, but he would look for it when he reorganized his office. And the guy also mentioned that someone else had contacted him about this movie a week prior. And at this point, there's several people poking around in the thread, trying to find different leads, but nothing is really amounting to an actual copy of the movie. A user named Baby Baba joked that perhaps Nintendo bought every copy and buried them in the desert like E.T. Little did he know at the time, he was actually closer to the truth than he realized. That August, Zach Parsons, the writer of Something Awful's Horror of Pornography column, which famously introduced the world to the horrors of Swap.ABI, wrote a call to action in his column to help expand the search. In the column, he shared what was known about Super Horneo 1 and 2, that they were both directed by prolific porn director Buck Adams and starred Ron Jeremy and TT Boy as the brothers who get sucked into a computer game. In the game world, they have to save the princess from a villain played by the director Buck Adams. This description appeared to just be garnered from the numerous unavailable listings that still existed around the internet to buy the movie. And there are of course no actual downloads to be found. But if they can get just a few more eyes on the search, perhaps there would be some hope. After all, lots of otherwise obscure porno did survive the internet. And he gave examples like the pterodactyl porn, the beavis and butthead porn, and of course, the notorious E.T. porn. Zach gave his email address and ended the column with a plea to anyone who may have any kind of information about this movie. We each have but one life to call our own, my friends. To settle for anything less than viewing Super Horneo Brothers would be to deny ourselves the complete satisfaction we deserve from life. This is our quest. This is our comp. A while later in the original thread, a user named Supreme Allah would arrive with blessings. He had the movie on CD-ROM, and he showed a picture of the CD-ROM. He didn't really know how to send it to people, but after some instructions, he rips it and uploads an ISO of the movie. Everyone is so hyped to finally see this thing, and they get to watch it, and it's just the sex scenes. Like, it clearly says Super Horneo Brothers on the disc, and on the menu screen, but then you, you go to the scenes and it's just naked people fucking. Not a pair of overalls to be seen. And then another user, Taste the Rainberg, reported that the VHS tape that he had was also like this, just the sex scenes, no story. Could it be that all along, there did exist the movie called Super Horneo Brothers with Ron Jeremy, but they called it Super Horneo Brothers just because with no actual connection to the games? I mean, it did come out in 1993, the same year that the movie came out. Perhaps they'd already filmed this and this was just some cheap way to cash in. I mean, after all, it is the porn industry. The thread would end with a defeated doorknob Johnny saying that if anyone finds anything, email either him or Zach Parsons. There'd be no further developments in this case for another year. But on June 25th of 2009, Zach Parsons would write another column, The Super Horneo Brothers Saga. Today, I am overjoyed to announce that the search has ended. A mysterious benefactor has provided Doorknob Johnny and something awful with the full DVD copy of Super Horneo Brothers 2. Buck Adams originally envisioned Super Horneo Brothers as a single epic movie. It boasted a 37-page script and 10 sex scenes. Unfortunately, the studio backing the production balked at the costly apocalypse now like three-day shooting schedule. Adams was willing to trim the script, but unwilling to sacrifice his creative vision. He moved to a different studio and chopped down the script so that a manageable two-day shoot could be planned. The end result was still too long, so it was split into two movies. Thankfully, the second installment begins with a lengthy recap of story and sex. The recap is a good place to begin as any. Now, this entire movie can be viewed in its entirety on YouTube, you know, without the sex scenes, Horneo without the porneo, but I will give you a summary. Ron Jeremy plays a computer programmer named Squeegee Horneo, and TT Boy plays Orneo Horneo, which is kind of confusing because Squeegee sounds like Luigi, but Ron Jeremy's the one that's wearing red. And then Orneo Horneo is wearing green, but he has the same naming structure as Mario Mario. The computer overloads, sucking them into what looks like a math textbook before launching them into a world Squeegee quickly figures out is his game world. 
the evil King Pooper, who honestly can kind of pass for Dennis Hopper's Bowser in certain lighting, and has one of the most bizarre squeaky voices this side of Alfred Ashford. Seriously, where did he get this voice from? What did he listen to that made him think, this is what King Koopa should sound like? King Pooper has kidnapped Princess Perlina, who should be Peach but has a name resembling Pauline. Pooper wants her to help him travel to the real world with a massive tub filled with semen, but ultimately, the Horneo brothers save the day. And Luigi gets the girl. That's how you know Buck Adams was a real fan, because he wanted Luigi to win. They return to the real world, but King Pooper manages to grab onto Ron Jeremy and comes back with him, where he plans to populate the Earth by impregnating human women with Koopalings. Starting with a prostitute that he hires. So Squeegee hatches a plan. They go back into the computer, and with the help of a living computer virus, destroy King Pooper's machine, getting him stuck in limbo forever. Note that we don't actually get to see the computer get destroyed or King Pooper get stuck in limbo. After the virus starts to get busy, it kind of fades to black and we see Squeegee in his office just explaining what happened. I have to imagine that this was a part of the shoot that got cut out or maybe they just kind of ran out of budget here. No more money left to make the machine go boom. So anyway, Luigi gets the girl once again and Ron Jeremy breaks the fourth wall, looks into the camera and tells us. He knew it would end this way. So it turned out that there was more than just sex scenes in this movie, and it was everything anyone could have possibly hoped it to be. But the mystery wasn't over yet. This is the second movie. What happened to the first movie? Five years later, October of 2014, there's a thread created by Bold Frankenstein Mir. Frankenstein and his friend walk into a video store in Aurora, Colorado. Sitting on the shelf was a copy of the VHS Super Horneo Brothers 1. Realizing what an important piece of film history this was, they bought it immediately. Tested it out, and it worked perfectly. Just a couple dudes watching Mario porn together. And while he was figuring out what to do with this amazing discovery, it sat in the box. It sat in that box for years until he decided that he was going to bring it to something awful to decide what to do with it. And most importantly, how to properly preserve it. Frankenstein, though, wasn't exactly knowledgeable about digitizing VHS tapes. And even if he was, the equipment to do this was very expensive. Other users mentioned someone named Atomic Thumbs, who was the guy to do this if you needed it to be done. An expert in these sorts of things. And Atomic Thumb appears, showing off his impressive VHS digitization rig. A rig that was just waiting, beckoning for Super Horneo. So they make arrangements for the tape to be sent to Atomic Thumbs. The tape arrives, and Atomic Thumbs makes a dramatic post of him getting the tape from his mailbox. And sharing that while he digitizes this tape, a documentary will be made about the preservation of Super Horneo. And while documentary is being shot, Frankenstein is sending letters to Harry Mone's Erotic Heritage Museum in Paradise, Nevada about this fantastic discovery to see if they want this among their collection of legendary porn artifacts. This is becoming much more than a simple digitization of a porno tape. This is a cultural event. The day Horneo is truly unleashed upon this world. But several weeks start to pass, and people are getting kind of antsy. Atomic Thumbs reassures people that the documentary is underway, to which some people respond, what could you possibly do in a documentary about this? Watching a guy scan VHS footage isn't exactly going to put you on the edge of your seat. Because of the delay, some people start to suspect that maybe there's a problem with the footage, or maybe the whole thing from the start was some kind of con. But Atomic Thumbs reassures them, it's coming. Horneo Brothers 1 will be released at midnight on Christmas. In the weeks leading up to Christmas, little bits and pieces will be put out there, like an advent calendar that builds up to Ron Jeremy's fat cock. And then finally, it's the dawn of the final day. The anticipation is rising. The doubters are there, and they're getting worried. But Atomic Thumb says that everything is happening as planned. And then, midnight comes. He uploads an MP4 of Horneo to his VPS. His bandwidth was very limited, so only 341 people total would be able to download it and people begin to download it, and the MP4 is corrupt. Is this the porn equivalent of purposely submitting a corrupted file instead of your final term paper so you can get a little more time to finish it? Atomic Thumbs tries two more files, an MKV, and in the year of our lord, 2014, a real player file. 
I imagine that there's a sizable portion of my audience that has no idea what the fuck that even is, although I was surprised to find out that it actually still exists. But these files, of course, also did not work. But after a few more attempts, he gets it working. It's a little bit late, but the moment has finally arrived. Time to watch Horneo 1. You start it up, and... Wait, what's this? Scenes from Part 1. Ladies and gentlemen, after months of time, a dramatic build-up, tapes being sent around between states, expensive digitization rigs, museums being contacted. After all that, it's Super Horneo Brothers 2. Again, the same movie from five years ago. You see, what had happened was, someone had taken a copy of Horneo Brothers 2, put it inside the Horneo Brothers 1 box, and it wound up at that store in Aurora, Colorado. And somehow, neither of the guys involved in this noticed that it was the wrong movie. Atomic Thumbs explains that he must have just looked away at the wrong time. But, at this point, as it actually turned out, there already was a version of Horneo 1 floating around the internet. A poster named Samuel L. Axon made everyone aware of this in the middle of the thread and actually posted an upload of that film. So yeah, although this whole process went awry, the movie actually isn't lost forever, you can go watch it now. Although a VHS copy is yet to actually surface. Nor has Atomic Thumbs' documentary. So now, that leaves us with the question, why the fuck was this so hard to find? Some had suspected that maybe Nintendo sued them to keep it from being distributed. I mean, they were pretty on top of maintaining their family-friendly image at this point, at least, you know, if you ignore the period of time where Zelda.com was a porn site. But that doesn't make all that much sense, considering that this movie would definitely be considered a parody and definitely be legal. Ron Jeremy himself would eventually reveal the truth on his website. On his site, you could typically buy all of his movies. Except for Horneo, that is. And around the time of the Something Awful search, a lot of people started to email him about it. So he explained that the reason why you can't buy Horneo is because Nintendo bought the rights to the movie. What? This prevents the movie from being distributed unless, you know, Nintendo wants to sell it themselves. And also, it opens up the possibility that the events in this film are canon. Vice would later catch up with Ron Jeremy to speak a bit about the film. You've done thousands of movies. Do you remember Super Horneo Brothers? Yeah. Buck Adams did a great job. He wanted to simulate the actual show. I'd never seen the video game. I don't play them at all, except when I go to Hugh Hefner's mansion. He has some video games in the back room. Other than that, I never play video games ever. I think they're boring. As a former school teacher, Asians are kicking our ass. While our kids are drinking beer and playing video games, Asians are getting high SAT scores. Cause you know, there's one thing that Asians are famous for, it's how much they don't play video games. What did you find especially good about the job Buck Adams did? He tried very hard to simulate the basic show. Buck knew Mario Brothers inside and out. I've been told before that I look like one of the brothers. They've made jokes about it, even did layouts in magazines where I had to impersonate that with a plunger in one hand, overalls, a big mustache. Pretty funny, you know? He had good attention to detail. It was one of his better videos. He added that noise when I walked, you know, makes a video gamey boink 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 sound. Plus it had good sex scenes. Pretty basic thing if you're gonna watch an adult movie. That's gotta be hot too. And it actually fills in some of the blanks here. For starters, the promo pictures that some people had used as evidence of the film's existence, the promo pictures that made some people be like, oh, well, maybe this is just a Mandela effect misremembering thing, they actually were unrelated to the movie. And with Ron talking about how great the sex scenes were in that movie, maybe that's why they had the sex-only CD-ROM version. I guess they were just too good to part with if Nintendo bought the rights, and you know, if, if you're naked, you can't wear blue overalls. And also hints at the potential existence of a lost movie, Super Horneo Brothers 3. Although realistically, he was probably just misremembering the fact that they had split Horneo up into two movies. But there you have it, the story of one of the internet's greatest solved lost media cases. The tale of the two pornos that are owned by Nintendo. That's all for now. If you like this video, check out my video about Resident Evil 1.5. I'm out.